How would you like to start your voiceover career with a free demo? The only thing better than cheap is, that's right, you know, it is free. And today, in 2021, you can start your voiceover career with a demo that is absolutely free. And it's called your DIY demo. Now, hang around because I've got information that might blow your mind. This might be the first time you're hearing this information. And I'm going to tell you all about why, how to do it. And then at the end of the video, hang around because I'm going to tell you specifically where to place those demos to help you get good work. Well, I'm Bill DeWeese, professional voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure that if you're not subscribed yet to the channel, subscribe. You'll get notifications. You'll know when those new videos come out, and I hope that you'll like it and you'll share the video as well. Your DIY demo. In other words, we're talking about a do-it-yourself demo. Now, truth be told, five or six years ago, I would have said no way. Don't even consider doing a demo yourself. But it's a completely different ballgame today. First of all, you need to understand you do need a demo. You always have needed a demo. You always will need a demo. That's how a client decides whether they even want to give you an opportunity. Think of it this way. Would you buy a car without test driving it? Probably not. Is a client going to buy you sight unseen or in this case, actually? No, they want to hear what you are all about. But here's the cool thing. And I just want to lay a little foundation so you understand where I'm going and why I'm telling you that it's okay and how to do this with a DIY demo because it's a completely different landscape. It's a different scene today than it was even five or six years ago because the truth is the opportunities for voiceover have exploded. They have expanded. There are so many more jobs available because think about it, YouTube. There are so many hours, thousands of hours of new content being created daily much of which requires voice. There are apps being developed that require voice. There's so much media, so much content being created on a daily basis, more today than at any point in history, much of which needs voiceover. Now, the thing beyond that that makes this even more possible, there are more entry-level positions. So let me explain. When I first got started in voiceover 15 years ago, there weren't many what we would call entry-level positions. Most voiceover was being put to content that was fairly expensive to create because video was more expensive 15 years ago to create than it is today. And much of that opportunity for voiceover was being guarded closely by gatekeepers who normally would be agents. So in other words, if you wanted voiceover work, you had to have an agent because most of the work fairly high level. Now, you want access to that work, you want it to get agent representation, you've got to have a pro demo. And it's certainly something you should aspire to if you're serious about a voiceover career, even today in 2021. But... That being said, there are so many entry-level positions that are available now at lower pay in which you do not need to be in a union, which, by the way, you don't need to be. I'm not in a union. You don't have to be in a union to make hundreds of thousands of dollars in voiceover. But you also do not need agency representation. Now, do these jobs, you know, pay as much as perhaps some of the other jobs that we're talking about? When you first went into the workforce, did you start off in the penthouse suite at the executive level? No, of course not. You started off, if you were like me, by working in a fast food restaurant, and then you began to learn, and you got more education, you got more training, and you began to move up the ladder. In voiceover, to make a rough comparison, it's more like that today. You can start off with more entry-level type jobs that certainly pay less than some of the other work, but you can actually make a really decent living getting started and then be able to work your way up the ladder as you go. To do that, you need a demo. Now, let's talk about specifically why you need a DIY demo. The DIY demo, when you're first getting started, is going to save you a lot of money. Now, if you've got plenty of money, maybe it's set aside in a retirement fund and you're retiring and now you're looking for your next career move or for whatever reason, plenty of cash flow, plenty of resources and spending several thousand dollars because that's what it's going to cost you for a professional demo. And hey, I'm a demo producer and I love working with talent and there's nothing that will open doors faster than a well-produced demo. But the truth is many who are getting started are because they've lost their jobs, they've been downsized or 
or they're in a situation, they're not getting as many hours as they used to. Point being, money is tight. So what do you do? That's where a DIY demo comes in. So you have to have a demo to get work and you can use a DIY demo to save money on the front end. Now, what that means is you're going to start with a more entry level type of work. It doesn't mean that you cannot make in voiceover even with a DIY demo. I've had students who have built six figure careers doing it this way. It might take a little longer than if you had a pro demo, but it can certainly be done. So how do you create a DIY demo? Well, the first thing I would say is this before we jump into the nitty gritty of it. If you don't have background in production, some of you guys come from a broadcast background. Some of you have produced hundreds and thousands of commercials and promos. And so if you have a skill set to do the more complex into production, that's certainly fine. But people are going to hire you because they like what they hear. In other words, they're listening more to your voice than they are the production. So if you don't have expertise in production, meaning adding music and sound effects and how to mix, master, all of these kind of things, don't worry about it. Simply focus on what we would call dry voice, meaning your voice without effects, without sound effects, without music. Better to not add things that you don't understand how to add than to do that in an attempt to make it sound better when it will only work against you. So it's okay to have just your voice in a DIY demo. So the first thing I recommend is this. When you're first getting started, there are two types of demos that you should consider. Let's talk audiobooks first. Unless you are opposed to recording audiobooks, and there are a number of reasons why maybe you just don't want to do audiobooks and it's your career, you could do whatever you want. If you have no interest in, in audiobooks, then don't start this way. But for most people getting started, I recommend looking at audiobooks because it is the lowest hanging fruit in voiceover. It is a large and growing and expanding market, and there's a broad range of work from the higher pay, but there's a lot of lower pay work and it's much easier to get. So when you're first getting started, you can actually start to generate some income and some cash flow. So if you're okay with doing audiobooks, the hard part about it, and you might be thinking, why would I not be okay with that? Well, doing audiobooks, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of recording. It's a lot of editing, but it's also a lot of good practice and it's a good way to hone performance and your editing skills. But in, again, unless you're opposed to audiobooks, I recommend getting started by recording audiobooks. And uh, the way that you do that, the format for it would simply be three audiobooks, three separate recordings, approximately 30 seconds in length. And so here's the thing, make sure that stylistically they're very different. It doesn't help you to be redundant. In other words, uh, let's say you're a big fan of history and so you record three history books. Probably not the best approach. Perhaps one uh, maybe business related, maybe one sports related. If you're interested in doing fiction, maybe one where there's fiction where you're doing character voices. Uh, but make sure that stylistically they're all different. And here's another tip for you. Only record demos of the types of books that you want to record. I say this from experience. Uh, I've recorded 41 audiobooks over the course of my career. And some of the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes I've made in voiceover was to audition and have demo material in a genre that I really ended up not enjoying specifically fiction. I have no interest in doing character voices. It's not necessarily in my skill set. Most importantly, it's not nearly as profitable because it takes far longer to record fiction than it does like uh, self-help or business or sports or other uh, type of things where you're not creating character voices. But audiobooks, again, it's the lowest hanging fruit. It's the most available. So that is the place I would recommend getting started. Secondly, create a commercial demo. The, the format for that, find four to six scripts and make sure those four to six scripts you get them by transcribing commercials you can find them on youtube or ispot.tv uh, take a commercial that already exists transcribe it you're using it for demonstration purposes so you're okay but i would take four to six scripts no longer than 15 seconds ideally about 10 seconds each but no longer than 15 seconds so you may have to edit the script down but make sure that stylistically they're very different so they can hear different styles different retypes different aspects of your personality and again these are all dry voice there's no effects or music being put with these so commercial demo that's the way to get started finally You've got your demo, what do you do with it? Where do you put it? Having the demo is great, but knowing where to place it. I always think of the demo as, let's use a fishing analogy. I think of it as bait. Okay, you've got your bait. Now we're gonna put that bait. You've gotta get in front of some fish. In other words, you've gotta get it in front of your target audience. First of all, let me start by telling you what not to do 
with a DIY demo. I would not send a DIY demo to a talent agent. I would not do direct marketing, sending it out to, for instance, marketing companies and video production companies. I wouldn't direct market. And I wouldn't put it on pay to play sites because that's really the deeper end of the pool. You're dealing with a lot more competition. And not that you can't get work that way, but that's the harder way to get work. So if you're starting with a DIY demo, what I suggest is if you have an audiobook demo, put it up on acx.com, three letters, ACX, Audio Creative Exchange, I believe is what it stands for, owned by Amazon. It's a platform that brings publishers and authors together with voiceover talent like us. By and large, again, it's not going to be at the high end of the pay scale, but again, we're looking at entry-level jobs to get you started, to get some experience, and to get some revenue, to get some cash flow going. The other thing for your commercial demo and your audiobook demo would be freelance platforms. Freelance platforms are the best places to get entry-level voiceover work. And a couple of the platforms that have worked best for my students would be Upwork.com and Fiverr.com. I have students who are generating six-figure incomes just by marketing themselves on Fiverr. So these freelance platforms are becoming larger. They're attracting more talent seekers as well as those offering their talent. So that is where you go to put the demos. So as you're getting started, remember, you don't need to go out and overextend yourself by paying several thousand dollars for a pro demo. If you can, that's great. If you can't, that's okay. You can start off at entry level voiceover by doing a DIY demo. Start with your audiobook and your commercial demos. Establish yourself on sites like acx.com and freelance sites like fiverr.com and upwork.com. And from there, you can begin to get work, experience, and revenue, where then you can springboard your career onto bigger and better things. Hey, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Again, make sure that you subscribe and share and like, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.